This is the data. It brings you closer to the action, closer to the adrenaline. It connects you with other fans, makes you feel part of the crowd. It reveals new perspectives, unlocks hidden insights wherever you are. This is the data. Data is a game changer. Day six of the US Open, saw Roger Federer, Andy Murray, Stan Wawrinka, Simona Halep, Petra Kvitova, and Victoria Azarenka all march into the round of 16. Today, we will see quarterfinal spots on the line. And among those playing will be Serena Williams, her sister Venus, Novak Djokovic, and Marin Cilic. But first, it's Inside the Baseline, presented by IBM. And good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the USTA Billie Jean King National Tennis Center, where it is day seven as we head into the final week of this year's final major. Spots in the quarterfinals on the line today for everyone who wins. And once again, good morning, everyone. Sam Gore joined by Chanda Rubin. And uh, Chanda, as we get into the second week of play, what are the big storylines to you, especially heading into today? Well, the, the big thing for me is that Serena Williams continues to move towards the second week and a potential date with history. And she's on a collision course, potentially, uh, with her sister Venus, who's playing some good tennis as well. That's right. If they win their matches today, they could face each other in the next round. But let's go back to yesterday and take a look at some highlights because one of the players, I guess she's under the radar, Simona Halep is the number two seed, but she's been pretty dominant. She has been. And Simona Halep shouldn't be under the radar. She had a great summer swing, got to the finals of Cincinnati. She's been playing very solid tennis. But, you know, for Halep, we've been looking at her as a potential contender with Serena Williams and potentially to take Serena Williams out. But she's been moving through very steady, dealing with the pressure much better than she has in previous years. And she took out this young American in pretty routine fashion. Could have been a tough match. Win over Shelby Robert Rogers. Petra Kvitova is another player many people say should threaten Serena Williams, but she's never gotten past the fourth round here. And against Smilova, this could have also been a dangerous match. A young, up and coming player, future star, big hitter, but Kvitova, she is so long, so deep, hitting through the court, and she overpowered her opponent time and time again in this match. She moved well around the, the net. She was aggressive when she needed to be and looking very confident, Kvitova. And she's another player who hasn't historically done well in New York, but she's looking like a real contender. Now it's very relaxed this year as opposed to other years. This was the match of the day. Victoria Azarenka against Angelique Kerber really Chanda to me should have been played later in the tournament. It should have been. It was a real battle of former Grand Slam champion Victoria Azarenka, who's been getting her ranking and her game back up after some injuries against Kerber, who's one of the best competitors out there on tour. And this match you know, gave the fans what they were expecting. After Kerber got up 5-3, Azarenka roared back, got that first set. Kerber responded and took it into the third. And it was just a battle, a stretch run to the finish. But in the end, Victoria Azarenka was a little more aggressive, had a little bit more firepower and also the ability to compete. We've seen it from Azarenka time and time again, and, and this was an excellent match in the end and well-deserved victory for Azarenka. Yeah, it was such an emotional, hard-fought match, but all smiles at the end. Sam Stos, her former champion here, something about New York she absolutely loves as she is cruising yesterday facing Irani. Well, back in 2011, Stoser won this event, and she hasn't done very much since then. But, you know, this tournament, something has changed. Maybe it's something in the water, but Stoser, she's com been competing better. She's staying calmer out there in court. And Ronnie, who gets a lot of balls back, was able to take this second set and take it into a third. And Stoser held her ground. She stayed consistent. Some of the longest points in this match went to, to Stoser, and that's how she was eventually able to get on top of Irani and take this match pretty routinely in the third. So Sam Stoser winning this match in three sets and moving on to the round of 16. As a result, Sam Stoser, of course, a former champion here. So Chanda, I know today we have Venus and Serena. That's the top half of the women's draw. But of the bottom half and the players we just saw in the highlights, who do you think is the most likely favorite to come through that bottom half? It's so tough. I mean, I was saying uh, Halep, 
certainly when the tournament started, but I think Kvitova, she's looking very good, and I definitely like the way she's playing. She has the big game that, to come through. So I think it's between those two. I may give the edge to Kvitova. Yeah, it'll be fun to see as this next week progresses. But let's switch over to the men because we had some, some more dramatic matches yesterday on the men's side. It seems like every day we've produced some sort of drama. But let's begin with Roger Federer, who is masterful again against Cole Schreiber. Roger Federer just looks like he has every ball, every shot in his arsenal. And it's so tough for any of his opponents to really, you know, dig into a match. And Cole Schreiber, he's a tough competitor. He can take out some big guns when he's playing his best. But Federer gave him no chance. It was a very clean match. I like how Federer has been moving forward, so much more aggressive. And he's doing it Federer at the right moment. And that bodes well for his chances. Federer now 10-0 against Philip Kohlschreiber and moving on to the round of 16. Andy Murray, we should point out, is a little under the weather. Chandy suffering from a bad head cold, and so a lot of people felt like maybe he would be vulnerable as a result against Bellucci. Well, this was a very calm match for Andy Murray and a match that he wanted to move through very cleanly, didn't want to stay out there very long. And, you know, it was the return yeah. game as well as the solid serving from Andy Murray. But in the big moments, he was just had a little bit more firepower, was a little bit more aggressive and crafty around the court when he Need it to be. And this is the perfect match for Andy Murray, not feeling as great, but moving through nicely. And yeah, Murray's been doubling up on the vitamin C, according to Jonas Bjorkman, who's here in uh, the coaching capacity. And he was able to get through this in straight sets and get a good night's sleep. Stan Wawrinka, the French Open champion from earlier this year, still looking for a really good match though he's been winning all of his matches in straight sets. This was against Bimmelman. And he's just been beating down his opponents in the big moments, the big points of matches. Stan Wawrinka has the big serve. He's got the big ground strokes. And that's what came to bear in this match. And when he got to the tiebreaker in the second set, he was able to take his opponent out and take that momentum into the third. And just looking very clean, very solid, Wawrinka. So Vavrinka moving on in straight sets. Uh, the top-ranked American, John Isner, has also looked extremely good here in New York. And Isner got a little bit fortunate here because his opponent had a bit of an injury. You know, something we saw, we'll see later with his neck. But of course, true Isner style, he started off serving big. He put his opponent under pressure. And whenever you're putting your opponent under pressure, if they have any type of injury, they're feeling a little bit under the weather, that may come to, to bear even more and have more of an impact on the match. And Vesely had to retire after that second set. A very easy, straightforward victory for John Isner, which he will love. Well, our IBM milestone graphic shows that John Isner hit his 900th career winner during that match yesterday. This was the big match of the day in terms of drama. Donald Young, who had come from two sets to love down, earlier in the week against Gilles Simone. He did it again, Chanda. Donald Young has been so impressive, having a major breakthrough, taking out these seated players like he's been able to do. He's got the racket talent. He has so many shots in his arsenal. But in past, he hasn't been able to get over the hump. And in so many areas, Chortsky was a bit better than Donald Young. But Donald Young competed so well in the big points. He was a little more crafty than Chortsky in the end. And he handled the nerves. Closing out this match, this was a big moment for Young, and he did it in style. Coming into the tournament, Donald Young had never come back from two sets of love down. He was 0-10, and, and he's done it two times already this week at the U.S. Open. How about the physical condition he must be in? He is in great shape. He's been working hard on his fitness. He said that time and time again. And finally now, it's paying off for Donald Young. So, Chandler, real quick, you think we'll see Roger Federer attempt that Sabre return against John Isner, where he runs in and tries to hit it really fast? I think he might. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be fun. I can't wait to watch that. It'll be Isner and Federer in week number two. Time now for our IBM More Than the Score feature. Today's question is, what's the most important shot in tennis? I like to think it's the return <laughs> because I think the guy's serves are so good now that if you can break once or twice to set, then you're going to win. The most important shot in men's tennis is the serve. The most important shot in men's tennis is the serve. The serve. You know, the forehand is becoming, I think, a huge shot in men's tennis, but still the serve. If you have a great serve, it's just a get-out-of-jail-free card and you get win so many cheap points and it just it makes life easier so serve is still in my opinion the most important shot 
So what do you think? Follow us on Twitter at hashtag Game Changers IBM. Tana, there, I mean, there's like no debate there. Serve, 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 serve. Is it really the biggest shot in tennis? Well, I, I mean, it is. You guys all said I that, believe, but yes. give me another point on that. Why? Well, I think the serve starts the points out, obviously, but for the guys, the holding serve and having a strong service game is so much more important. When you get broken, you know, oftentimes and not, that's the set or it could be the match. So the serve absolutely is, is key. Well, there was no debate in that question, but let's move on to the men's preview today because there are some question marks as to who's going to win. Tonight, we'll see Novak Djokovic in action. Djokovic is going to take on Roberto Batista Agut, a uh, Spanish player seated number 23. You see any trouble for Djokovic in that? I don't see much trouble for Djokovic. The way he's been playing, he looks confident. He's moving well. He's so elastic around the court, and he gives his opponents almost no space to hit into. He's got a 2-0 record against uh, Bellucci, so I think he'll move through that one pretty pretty routinely. You know, we're seated right outside of Ash Stadium, and in a few moments, Marin Cilic, the defending champion, will take on Jeremy Chardy of France. I, I like watching Chardy play, I have to admit. He's a fun player to watch. He's a talented player as well and you know he has the ability to take down a top player and cause them some trouble in matches so for Chilich he won't take this match for granted he had a tough five set win in, in his previous round Chilich but he's coming through and you know this is a place where he's comfortable and confident being the defending champion so he looks very good as well. Well if fans want drama or want to see a prima donna type player go to see Lopez and Fognini. I mean, who knows what's going to happen in that match? It's going to be a very appealing match to watch, I will say. And both what do you mean by that? <laughs> both of these players have a lot of flair with their shot making, um, with their serving as well. Lopez, a big server and can cause a lot of uh, people problems with that lefty spin. But Fonini taking out Rafael Nadal after being down two sets of love, nobody's ever done that before. So he didn't come into this event winning any, turn, any matches on, on hard courts, but he's certainly very confident and a dangerous player right now. An open era record for Frenchmen into the round of 16 on the men's side. We'll see two of them face each other today, Benoit Pair and Joe Willie Sanga. Well, Sanga, he's kind of my dark horse. He's under the radar. I think he's one of the best players to not have won a Grand Slam yet. And I really like how he's been moving through very, very quietly. And he has a great record against other French players. Pierre is certainly playing some of the best tennis of his career. But Sanga, he's only lost to another Frenchman in a Grand Slam once out of 12 meetings. So I think he's going to come in, into this match with his eyes on the prize. So some big men's matches coming your way in just a few moments. IBM Insights focuses on the round of 16 match between Serena Williams and Madison Keys. Serena Williams was victorious in her only previous meeting with Madison Keys. It was earlier this year in the semifinals of the Australian Open. In that match, though, Keys was actually the aggressor. She hit more total winners, 27 to 19, but she made too many unforced errors, 39 to 16. And many of those came on second serve returns, giving Williams too many easy points on a part of her game that can be vulnerable. The Keys has been returning extremely well here at the U.S. Open so far. Against Radvanska in the third round, she won all 13 points on Radvanska's serve. Keys has the firepower to really give Serena trouble. The challenge will be to keep that power under control. Serena will need to improve her serving, which she did in the last two sets against Maddox Sands. She had a lot of second serves, but hitting a lot of second serves to Madison Keys may not be the same winning strategy as it was in Melbourne. Chan, I'm looking forward to that match as we head into the preview of the women's. Let's go ahead and talk about Serena Williams and Madison Keys. What do you think about that match? I think it's going to be a blockbuster matchup, a I'm rematch from the Australian IBM Open, as you mentioned been... earlier. And I think for Madison Keys, she's improved consistently throughout the year. I think she's gaining in confidence. She's understanding how to lasso in all of that power and play with sustained aggression throughout a match. She's got the big serve that can match Serena. She also hits the ball at times just as hard or harder. So I think it's going to be a great match and Serena's got to up her game just a little bit. 
That'll be fun to watch. Mladenovic and Makarova play the nightcap this evening. Your thoughts on that matchup? Well, Makarova has won their, their only two meetings, but it's been tight three-set matches. Mladenovic beat uh, Kuznetsova, Svetlana Kuznetsova, in the first round, a former champion here. So she's got a lot of confidence. She hits the ball big. I think this could be a different matchup for her, and she's got a great shot against Makarova because she has the ability to, to be aggressive and actually win points. Venus will actually play before Serena today. She takes on Kontavite after the Chilich match. A lot of players, a lot of people may not know much about Kontavite. What can you tell us about that? Well, this is their first meeting, so Venus would not know very much about her as well. But she came through the qualifying. She's played a lot of matches, three matches just to get into the tournament. And now, you know, she's in a great rhythm. And a player who's in a rhythm like that is always dangerous. But Venus Williams is playing some of the best tennis we've seen her play all year, uh, be beating Belinda Benchinch in that previous round. So, you know, if she comes out firing with the serve, she has a great shot to get through in a, to a potential matchup with her sister. Well, we're all holding our breath for Jeannie Bouchard. She hit her head in the locker room yesterday, had to pull out of the doubles and the mix. Still on the schedule for today in singles to play Roberta Vinci later. The big question is going to be the health of Eugenie Bouchard, and, and hopefully she's feeling good and well enough to, to go out there and play some good tennis. Well, it's time now for our IBM Game Changers segment. Let's join Jimmy Arias for a look into some analytics. I'm with Elizabeth O'Brien of IBM, and we've been looking at the stats. Historically, Elizabeth, what does it take to get through week one and then even continue further into week two in this tournament, stats-wise? Well, we have looked at last year's winner, Chilich, right? And he's a power player. He had great power stats through week one. Um, his consistency stats weren't as strong through week one, but when we saw him in his last two rounds, he dropped his errors by almost half, right? So he matched his power with consistency. And so can the consistent players ratchet up the power, and can the power players ratchet up the consistency, which will take the day in week two? Yeah, what's interesting, I think, for Chilich is those three days in week two that he did get rid of the unforced errors. Maybe the only time in his career that he ever did it to that quite that level. He was hitting the ball huge and not missing. Obviously, that got him a U.S. Open. For consistent players, what have you found? On the women's side, looking at a player like Simona Halep, speaking of consistency, right? She's gone deep into tournaments. You know, the thing is, on the women's side, however, it feels like only Serena Williams. There's Petra Kvitova, who has that huge power. Madison Keys, who has that huge power. But it feels like you can beat Kvitova in keys possibly with consistency if you're fast enough. I'm not sure about Serena Williams. She sort of has a little bit of everything for the most part, it seems to me. Are there any names that stand out on the men's side? Well, Saga, he's a power player. He's already got it going. He's got the level you want. That yeah. might be difficult to yeah. keep for two weeks yeah. in a row. I did say after the second round, I want you to know that I think Sanga's at least making the semis. Okay. That was my, and he is playing well, as you said, so far. You guys, we'll see in the end who gets the most winners and cuts out those unforced errors. Okay, thanks, Jimmy. Chanda, Kontavite and Madison Keys stand in the way of Venus versus Serena in the quarterfinals. Do you think we're going to see it? I think we could see in one of those matches, we could see a little bit of the changing of the guard. I won't say which one. <laughs> I'm going to keep that to myself. But I do think, I mean, this has been the story, American women coming through, young American women, and then, of course, the, um, the, the standout American women who have been there at the top, Serena and Venus. They have the, definitely have the confidence and the guns, but these young players are, are very hungry. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun today. Don't miss day seven action. And you can join us every day on social media via Twitter or Instagram with the hashtag Inside Baseline. So for Chanda Rubin and Jimmy Arias, I'm Sam Gore. A big day in store. Day seven of the U.S. Open coming your way. This has been Inside the Baseline presented by IBM.